so now uh, let's work um, on to a, a word problem here again. And uh, let's take a look at this. And again, here I think it's essential to make a drawing because anytime you have a word problem, you, I, I, before I suggested it, I actually insist um, to, to actually have a drawing because um, it's, it's, I think it's a little crazy to just go and be able to read all this, you know, whatever gibberish and somehow be able to organize in your head. Um, apparently Stephen Hawking could do that, but, um, but I certainly ain't no Stephen Hawking. So um, anyway, um, Let's try this. So let's uh, force some magnitude. Okay, so what we have going on here is we have, um, let's take a look, 2,000 newtons and 900 at, on, on, a, at an, on an eye bolt. You know an eye bolt is basically one of those bolts that, you know what I'm talking about, right? There are these bolts that, right, and that goes into the wall, right? And this is like a, a hook. Anyway, that's my little uh, hardware lesson of the day. All right, so this becomes... Here's the big hook here that's very firmly latched into the wall. Now, we could have a certain force that's coming up angle of 30 degrees and negative 45 degrees. So what I'm going to do is let, all right, so this is going out at a magnitude of 2,000 newtons, okay? Okay, newtons is just a measure of, uh, of force. Okay, and from this direction, right, we have pulling on a slightly slower. We have, but it's a slightly greater angle. We have one of 900 newtons. Okay, and then here's our sort of imaginary x-axis because when we have, see these, we see that these aren't, remember we had the compass bearings, and obviously this isn't even direction, right? This is a little different. So typically these type of problems, we are going to do this relative to the x-axis because uh, we're not, uh, compass bearing doesn't make sense, right? Because this is even north-south, this is up-down, okay? So we, we will use the horizontal x-axis. So this will be 30, right? And this is negative 45. Okay, so that's what we have going on here, and uh, we want to know, right, with the x-axis, we want to find the direction magnitude of the resultant force. Okay, so again, let's do, um, uh, and again, it looks like I'm doing sort of a geometric analysis, which I guess with these word problems, you kind of have to do a bit of both, so I'm sort of incorporating the two together. Um, think of this as sort of a synthesis problem of two uh, methodologies. So I'm going to bring that up there, and I think that should do it, all right? So I'm going to bring that down here. That should be parallel to this, right? And I believe it's going to bring us slightly above it, right? I don't think this is going to go over, and that looks about right, okay? So this is our 900 newtons, right? And then we have our resultant vector is simply going to be this, okay? So this is going to be the resultant force. So what does that mean? What is this hook going to feel, right? That's a resultant force, and you can sort of see in terms of, um, you know, just from a, geez, you know, just from an engineering standpoint, you see how, how uh, important that is because, um, you know, that's the force that we have to worry about. If it's going to pop out, it's going to pop out this way, okay? So if it's coming down, so, you know, it, it affects all sorts of things. So knowing these type of forces is, is very critical, especially when it comes to, you know, engineer, in the engineering world and, or any, you know, really even just basic you know, uh, uh, construction of any, you know, any, any little system like this. So anyway, so that's, uh, that's the resultant vector. Okay, so this is what we're trying to calculate. What is the effective force that's on this eyeball? Because that will determine, uh, you know, how much, you know, uh, whether this is going to hold or not, basically, right? So let's take a look at this. So what are we going to do? Let's, let's get rid of our sample eyeball there, because I think we need all the space we can. And we're going to use our good friend law of cosines. Okay, never thought you'd make friends with the law of cosines, but it happens, okay? So anyway, so we have, um, I'm going to call this, in fact, I'm going to label this. I think it's sometimes not a bad idea to label this. Now, we, since we know, just as we like things that are kind of familiar, so I'm going to call this side the little c, and then let's call this back big, okay? Just because that's what we're going to calculate. Um, I am going to call this uh, a, and so call this little a, and I'm going to call this um, b, so this becomes a little b. Okay, so we know that law of cosines, I'll bring it way over here because we know that we're going to run out of space, is we have um, c squared, right, the distance, equals simply a squared plus b squared. This is the Pythagorean element of it, but of course, uh, these aren't, this is not a right angle. So this becomes um, minus 2ab cosine c. Okay, this big C is, is this angle here. So we have to figure out what this angle is, right? This angle right here. Well, let's think about this. Okay, this is 75, right? 
Okay, and I'm gonna little little geometry come back to haunt you because this is, represents a transversal, and these are two parallel lines, right? So what does that mean? This this angle here, right, is simply gonna be the supplement to this, right? All right, so this becomes this angle here becomes a supplement, which is 180 minus 75, which of course equals 105, right? That means since these are corresponding angles, right? because these are parallel lines, corresponding angles, this also has to be 105. Okay, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you're, you're, you need to review your geometry, okay? So that's 105, okay? So uh, let's take a look at this. Let's uh, see what happens, and I'm gonna plug in some numbers, right? 900 equals A, and that's why I say, you know, it's very important to label and draw, because when it comes to plugging, there's nothing like having your uh, all nicely enabled and then you can just plug it in. It's just It just makes life easier. You don't wanna hold stuff in your head. Okay, so anyway, 900, right? Just a piece of cake here, right? 900, right, plus b squared, which is 2,000 newtons. I'm not putting in units, although I should be, maybe at the end, I don't know. Um, let's see, minus 2 times a, right, 900 times uh, b, and I'm so proud of myself because I actually left myself enough room to fit this whole equation in here, uh, cosine, 105 degrees, okay? And um, this comes out to a crazy number. Uh, this, uh, of course, is 105, it's an obtuse angle and, and it's a cosine, so you know it's gonna be negative, okay? So this is gonna turn, turn to a plus. Uh, it should come into your calculation, but be just be aware that you know that this number is going to become negative, so this is gonna turn to a plus. Just, just when, you're, when you're doing a cal uh, calculator, just double check, okay? Obtuse angle, the cosine, it becomes negative, right? Uh, if you look at it, that, mean, that means it's in the, the second quadrant, so cosine is negative, and that will uh, um, make this negative into a positive, okay? So this becomes what? Let's try this, 8,100. Uh, more bigger than that, right? 810,000 plus 4 million, right? Big numbers. I think we'll fit this all in, right? Minus uh, 2 times. Um, you know what? I'm. You know what? This is this is gonna get very very ugly. So let's just cut to the chase here. I'll let you calculate if you don't trust me. Um, um, and that would be let's see nine three one seven point eight seven. Okay, but that's simply all this. Okay. Now we know this is gonna be a plus. Okay, so double check if you're not if you're getting a minus there, you probably punched the wrong number. You did something wrong because this should be a negative, making that a plus. Okay. So let's take a look at this, and that gives us a final value of 4,903,174.85. Now, it really just sounds like this bolt is ready to get pulled out of the wall. Um, however, uh, remember, this is c squared, so that's the beauty. We can take the, take the square root of both sides, right? Um, and of course, the uh, the negative value uh, is is a trivial solution. Doesn't really mean anything, right? So two two one four point three one newtons. Okay, so that's a little more along the lines of what it is. All right. So now we need to figure out the angle because that's also part of the vector, right? A vector is nothing if it's just a magnitude. Otherwise, it's a scalar quantity, and it does really doesn't mean anything, right? Because you know the angle which is pulling it really changes what that actual force is. So let's figure that out, and from that we have to call upon our other friend, law of sines, okay? So that becomes what? 2214.31 over sine of 105 degrees, okay? Sine of, right? Because this we have established is equal to 2214.31, yes? Okay, so that equals, and then I'm gonna take the angle opposite because this is the angle we want to find out, right? So that becomes um, 900 over sine theta. Okay, so just through um, cross multiplication, blah, blah, uh, we get, um, well, we're going to end up with a calculation where this becomes sine. I'm going to jump like half a step here and 0.3926, okay? So this is going to give us sine sine theta equals this, and so we take the inverse sine of that, and that gives us approximately angle of about uh, 23.12 degrees, okay?
So these, of course, are things you all do your calculator. I mean, I'd like to tell you I'm doing this in my head, but I definitely am not. Okay. Um, so, uh, but here are here are the things. And again, you do on your calculator. Double, you know, be, be careful of signs and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I mean, when I say signs, I mean the negative and positive signs. Uh, here's our magnitude. Here's our angle relative to the x-axis. And again, on this type of problem, we would not change this into bearing, right? Because it's not bearing; it only refers to direction with north, south, and whatnot. This is actually um, vertical and horizontal, so it always has to do with the horizontal with the x-axis. So what we have is a vector which is of 2,214.31 uh, newtons, right, at an angle of 23 point, uh, 20, this angle here, theta, equals 23.12 um, uh, degrees, that should be a point, with respect to the x-axis, okay? So, um, that's an example of a number of different calculations we can make and manipulating and working with very, um, vectors uh, using algebraic methods. And as you see, we, I, I sort of incorporate, or I at least slipped in just because I like using uh, 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 geometric methods. I, uh, uh, we, we kind of incorporate and we have to go back and forth because they are very intertied, okay? And I think, as I was saying, um, don't be afraid to go back and forth, okay? I'm showing you two different methods. Um, just so you can, it will just help you understand what the problem is. And that's the most important thing before you ever start any problem is understand what you're doing, okay? Because if you understand what you're doing, I guarantee you can solve any problem, okay? So, um, because, you know, the underlying principles, as you say, are all interconnected and, and uh, um, they're not as uh, complicated or as daunting as they seem at the very beginning, okay? So, all of a sudden, all these crazy little formulas start kind of making sense and fitting together, okay? So that is our, um, the, now we've gone over geometric and algebraic methods, and, uh, you know, in the next sections, we're going to jump to three dimensions, which is always kind of interesting, but you'll see that even that's not uh, um, that, that much of a, a, a leap, okay? So anyway, that's what it is. Uh, that's uh, vectors, um, and uh, again, next section is 3D uh, vectors, and uh, thank you very much for using educator.com.